So far, rebuilding my crash 2017 Volkswagen Golf R has been going surprisingly pretty smooth. But today, I face one of the biggest challenges yet, and that's replacing the dashboard. As you can see, the passenger airbag deployed during the crash, which inevitably rips a hole through the dashboard. And the only way to fix this is by, unfortunately, replacing it with a new one. That means in order for this new one to fit in properly, which doesn't have a deployed airbag, that means every single thing you see here, including the center console, has to come out of the car. I can't believe it's finally time to replace the dashboard in the Volkswagen. It feels like it was just yesterday that the car got delivered to my doorstep. This car has been a true test of my abilities and my mental strength. Figuring out how to get the car running, fixing the coolant leak, and even attempting bodywork for the first time has all been new to me and quite the experience. In the last episode, I managed to remove the headliner from the car because I needed to replace the blown curtain airbags and also fix the creases that were made in the headliner. Plus, some of these parts needed to come out anyway in order to replace the dash. Now, before I start taking everything apart from the dashboard, I need to first put in the headliner because it's not currently in the car. Well, it is in the right spot, but it's just not on the right side. It's actually on the top of the car. Now, luckily, before I took the headliner out, I went ahead and labeled everything with the correct side that it came out of. So that should make the installation process a bit easier. So the first step towards reinstalling the headliner is to put the handles and sun visors back on while the headliner is out. Now they aren't actually fully installed this way. They're more or less just held in place by a piece of plastic behind the headliner. Once in the car, that's when I can push them into their clips and that's what holds it into place. When Justin up in case you saw some creases in my last episode, I went ahead and steamed this another two to three more times and literally all the creases came out of the headliner. It's, it's absolutely incredible. To reinstall the sun visors, I reconnected the wire and locked them into place on both sides. Then I reconnected the light as it's easier to do that now than when the headliner is actually in the car. Getting the rest of the headliner back into the car without creasing it wasn't easy. The best method I found was folding the back seats down and turning the headliner as there was more room going vertical than just straight in. Once the headliner was in enough, I put the back seats back up to hold the headliner close to the roof and dragged it all the way through. Then it was time to reconnect the main harness to the headliner and start locking the headliner into its clips. Starting from the front, I worked my way back, connecting all the clips back into place. And of course, reconnecting the handles was just as difficult as taking them out. A tip for this is using a screwdriver, a small one, to help manipulate the clips back into place. Then it was time to reinstall the seatbelt trim and start reconnecting all the lights and buttons. This was a very simple process and only required me to put maybe two screws back in. The rest was just reconnecting the wires and popping in the trim. Alrighty guys, so the headliner is officially back installed into the car. Everything is back in the place it's supposed to be. What a pain in the butt though, putting these clips in the handles back in. The little plastic ones are a pain in the butt to slide in. But everything is in, everything is good, everything works. I connected the battery because in order to take the steering wheel off to start on the dash, the, uh, the battery has to be turned on so you can turn the wheel. I really hope these airbags don't deploy when I first start though. I'm like kind of nervous. Should I even like be in the... All right, so in order to take the steering wheel airbag off, what you need to do is get a Phillips small screwdriver, pull the steering wheel out as far as you can, and then as you can see in the back, when you turn the wheel 90 degrees, you can see here that there is a clip right here. There's like a metal bar you can see, and then a little bracket that it sits on. What you need to do is take a screwdriver and get it above it and pry it down and that should pop out one side of this, the airbag. And then you can do that on both sides and the airbag should ideally come right out. All right, so with the airbag clips disconnected, we can slowly pull this out, revealing a few intricate wires. I believe 
there is two that have to come out. First one is the yellow one, which is pretty easy. You kind of just get in there with your finger or a little screwdriver, if you may. You get under it, you pull it up, and then it wiggles out the other side. And we are free, good to go. And we have a blown airbag. Cool. With the steering wheel out of the car, we can finally start to deconstruct this dashboard. But first, we need to get these seats out of here so I have more space to work with. With the seats out of the way, I now have enough space to work on the dash. The first thing that has to go is the steering wheel and everything attached to the steering column. I started off with the plastic trim, which is just clipped in, and then I removed the wheel itself, which is held down by a big triple square bolt. With the wheel out of the way, I can now access the clock spring, which is extremely fragile. I made sure to tape this down as I don't want it to spin around or move and accidentally rip the ribbon cable that's inside it. I unscrewed the three screws that held the lower trim on, two at the top and one at the bottom. With that out of the way, I unplugged all the wires that plugged into the clock spring and removed one little screw at the bottom that held it into place. This gave me access to the stock, which was held on by one screw as well. Removing this frees up enough space for the dash to slide over the column successfully. Next up is removing the center console. And to do this, I started by removing the trim that covers the shifter. Then I took off the trim that covers the climate control and I had to remove some screws and pull the tabs that keep the climate control mounted to the dash. This then allowed me to disconnect it and move onto the side trim. There are a couple of bolts all around the center console that you have to remove, freeing it from the floor. All right, update for anybody trying to take the center console out. We got everything unbolted and it's free. Problem is I can't get this over the shifter because the shifter is in park and with the car off and the battery disconnected, it won't go into neutral. So we have to go into neutral. Well, there's a little yellow switch. You probably won't see it, but it's all the way down in here. And I can press it with my finger and I'm gonna put my foot on the brake and I can put it the, the car into neutral and that'll give me enough room to slide this over and out. All right, we're gonna shift this into neutral foot, uh, foot on the brake. There's a little button, you can feel it, press it down, press this, and now it should be, you can probably shift it even further into drive. Taking my foot off the brake, and we're good. We just have to remember this is in neutral. You know. Now, I totally forgot that I had to disconnect all the center console goodies first, which required me to remove the trim, and that gave me access to the storage compartment and the rest of the screws holding the cup holder in. Pulling up on the cup holder, freed it from the center console, and gave me access to the clips behind it, which needed to be disconnected. Then, I could finally remove the center console. Next thing that had to go was the radio and vent trim, which is just held down by some clips that I was able to get free with a pry tool. I could then pull the vents out, which was a bit tricky, but I was able to get it done and unplugged it in the back. Next up was the gauge cluster trim, which is held down by two screws. And with that out of the way, I could pull out and unplug the gauge cluster, which will fix another day. Using a special tool, I was also able to pop out the radio. Alrighty, so while I have everything pretty much apart, not really much more room, but instead of getting further in, I'm just gonna really quickly install the SRS module and then that's it. I'll leave it unplugged until I have the entire dash and all the airbags back in. And when I start the car, then I'll plug the, uh, the module back in. Moving on, the next thing that had to go from the dash was the glove box. Using the same tools to remove the radio, I was able to pop out the MMI system, which then gave me room to access and begin to remove all the screws that hold the glove box to the dashboard. Using an extension, I was also able to get the last hidden pain in the butt screw and out came the glove box. But that's not all you have to do. You then need to disconnect all the connectors that go to all the lights on the glove box as well as pull off what appears to be an air hose on the back. With everything off the dash that needs to come off, the next step was to disassemble and remove all the screws that mount the dash to the car itself, as well as unplug the wires that connect to the passenger airbag. There's quite a few screws hidden all over the car, so the best technique I found was to lightly tug on the dash and look for the screws or clips in the spots that were still uh, hard to pull that were still being held down. I also found connectors on either side of the dash hidden under a trim piece that 
needed to be unplugged. I had my friend Sean help me to do this because it was a pain in the butt reaching my stubby fingers in there. And with the connectors finally unplugged, I rerouted the wiring harness so that it wouldn't get snagged on anything. And then we could finally attempt to remove the dash. longer have a dash bare bones but we got it out totally black from the sun i think we should keep it like this yeah dash is officially out wasn't all that bad i'll be honest really wasn't all that bad it's half the battle though the other half is putting it back together but not a bad look if you ask me Alrighty guys, so the new dash has been, you know, just meticulously placed back inside. It's time to now reassemble everything. But before I do, I wanna kinda of show you the layout that I've left on the floor to making this process of assembling the dash or reassembling the dash that much easier. So check this out. I had a feeling that assembling and disassembling the dash was gonna take a while. I wanted to lay everything out so that I can pick up from where I left off. Everything here is pretty much in the order that it was taken apart. So putting things back together, we're gonna to start here, work our way down and continue this pattern as we go until we get to the final atrium pillars. Lastly, I've also picked up this method, which is honestly been incredible for replacing dashes. You can see starting up here, working my way down is the bolts that I've taken out and where they go. So putting it back together, we're gonna to start at the bottom and work our way back up. Now it's time to do everything we just did, but in reverse. Off camera, I spent a good 30 minutes or so fishing the wiring harness through to its original spot to make the reinstall process a bit easier. Now, I'm so glad I took photos of everything because if I hadn't, I don't know how I would have remembered where everything went. Now, moving on, I think the hardest part of reinstalling the dash was figuring out where all the bolts go that mount the dash to the actual car. This not only was the longest part of the reassembly, but also the most tedious as it was a total guessing game trying to find all the empty screw holes to put the screws in. Fortunately though, I was able to find them all and with all the screws back in, I could then start reinstalling the glove box and plugging everything back into it. Next up was reinstalling the MMI system, which is pretty easy too, because everything's color coded on the back. And once it's plugged in, you kind of just slide it back into its kind of shelf there. This is why it's also important to run the wiring harness correctly before reinstalling anything, as you want to make sure that all the wires are lined up and in place before putting everything back. Next up was the radio, which has two plugs and just clips back into place. And then the gauge cluster, which has one plug and two screws mounting it to the dash. I also made sure to put all the trim back correctly and I took my time with this because it was a bit fiddly. And once that was in, I could then put the center console back in.
Now, once the center console is bolted back down, I could then reinstall the cup holders, which was a bit tricky because there are a lot of wires and connectors that need to be plugged back in. And you wanna make sure that they're all in the right place as some of them connect to the cup holder, but others connect to the shifter and then others connect to the cigarette lighter. And they're all kind of in the same general vicinity. Once I was able to figure that out, I could then reinstall the storage compartment and also the rear console trim. Oh, and I was also able to unlock the armrest in a previous video. I had mentioned this, the armrest storage compartment by removing two screws in the back and then using some double-sided tape to hold those levers up. I know you can't see that, but you kind of just have to take my word for it, but now it can finally open. Got it done. After reinstalling the climate control and trim, it was time to start working on the steering column. The first thing that goes back is the stock, which is held on by one screw. And then I can slide the very fragile clock spring back over the column and connect everything back to it. Now the lower trim was next, which has one connector and three screws. Then the steering wheel could go back on. And to make the installation process of this a bit easier, there's a small notch in the wheel and on the column, which helps you align it correctly instead of just putting it on crooked and potentially, you know, messing up your alignment. So keep that in mind if you ever try to take off your steering wheel. Now, last but not least was tightening down the triple square and reinstalling the A pillars. Alrighty guys, that is a wrap for today's video. The dash has been completely reinstalled back into the car, including the center console. All that's missing is our driver's airbag, which we'll get done in the next video and plugging in the SRS module, but otherwise, Everything is starting to look like a new car again, so I'm super excited. But with all that being said, if you like content like this, then definitely make sure to drop a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Pull me closer